Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And as you know, every month we try to bring you a different department head, a different program to learn more about your county government. And this month we're very pleased to have our Rocky Knoll Administrator with us, Mike Tobenheim. Welcome, Mike. Good afternoon. How are you guys? We're doing good, and we're pleased to have you with us. Mike's been Thanks. with Sheboygan County now for going on his third year. So three years as the administrator at Rocky Knoll, and let me tell you, it has been a very successful track record. So we're pleased to have Mike here today to talk a little bit about Rocky Knoll and what's changed over the last three years and, and the good things that have happened. Mike, please start by sharing a little bit about yourself, your background. Sure. Um, I've been in healthcare about 33 years. I'm sure there's a point in time which you stop acknowledging it, but uh, about 33 years. Um, all of it in the long-term care industry. Most of it, though, in the private sector. Um, so this is, uh, while not my first experience uh, working with a government-owned uh, or operated center, it is the first as the administrator of such a center. So. Healthcare is kind of in your family genes, it seems like. With it is, uh, yes. My wife is uh, a nurse and uh, a vice president uh, for a um, competitor of ours. I can't give them credit. Right. So, right. Uh, and then uh, my daughter is uh, a licensed nurse as well, an RN, and my son is uh, a paramedic, although he's not uh, currently practicing in the field. And when you say 33 years, public sector, private sector, where, where have you gained most of your experience? Most of it was in the private sector. I worked for, um, uh, back in the 80s, what would have been the 800-pound gorilla in the industry, Beverly Enterprises, uh, back then when we owned and operated over 1,100 centers. I was a corporate director for them. I'll be there. And again, three years ago, started at Rocky Knoll. Yeah. Three years ago, uh, August in uh, 2007. And what's been your greatest challenges since you became the administrator? Um, probably um, uh, uh, working with the staff to get them to uh, understand that we could be successful, that the center uh, uh, could reduce the tax levy, that we could uh, 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 be owned and operated uh, successfully as a, as a county entity and that we could compete in the, in the private sector. And I think as a, a number of our viewers know, particularly if you've lived in Sheboygan, Sheboygan County for uh, the last decade or longer, that at one point Sheboygan County had three facilities, Rocky Knoll, Comprehensive Healthcare Center, and Sunny Ridge. Uh, the Sheboygan County Board closed Comprehensive Healthcare Center. That was actually around 2001, 2002. We put on a $9, $10 million addition at Rocky Knoll to consolidate, as well as tremendously improve the conditions, the environment that our residents lived in. And then in 2007, May of 2007, the County Board privatized Sunny Ridge. So Mike came in on the heels of all that, going from three facilities to one, and uh, staff transition and some working with the private sector, some staying with Rocky Knoll, bumping other less senior employees out. So it was a very trying time, I think, in the history of Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. Difficult decisions by the county board. But again, Mike comes in with a very strong background of business sense and, um, as you said, have forged some good working relationships with your management team and staff. What were some of the key enhancements or changes you made right away when you, when you became administrator? Well, I think the, uh, probably the biggest single change was to get them, uh, get everybody to understand that it wasn't a mentality about cutting and just reducing and eliminating. It was about going out and generating revenue. Uh, we're one of the few county departments that has that capability to actually generate its own revenue streams. And uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges was teaching them how to do that and how we could compete, be successful, um, generate the revenues that uh, we, we needed to, uh, uh, to enhance our overall operations and keep things going. And then secondly, uh, was to convince everybody that Rocky Knoll wasn't next. I mean, we weren't just gonna close it or sell it or you know, abandon it or, or that. Um, and then to get everybody to function together as one team. As you mentioned, you took three separate 
buildings, and while they're in the same industry, they each have a life of their own, and they each have different ways of doing things, and all of a sudden you had to combine three workforces and teach them how to work as one. So. And how do you think you've succeeded thus far? How's, how's your management team been reacting to this new approach? I think the management team has done very well. Um, they were skeptical, of course. Uh, most of them had uh, 20 plus years of seniority in the, in the county system. So uh, a lot of what I brought to them was, was a different way of looking at things. And um, once they started to see some success, I, I knew they would, uh, they would begin to embrace it, and, and they did. And uh, they have now become accustomed to being successful, so it's, it's not hard to, to motivate them to continue to be successful. You've got a great team there, and, and as you said, we really needed to operate more like a business, generate revenue, and as you know, and certainly Mike knows, that was one of the key challenges the county board had. We had three facilities, more beds than we needed, more mm -hmm. beds than demand, and at one point, our tax levy was about 6.1 million to support these facilities. I, that was reduced significantly when we consolidated comprehensive with Rocky No and we privatized Sunny Ridge. But when you started in May, I think the tax levy was still about three and a half million or so. It was. Yeah. What's happened since? Uh, well, since that time, I'm very pleased to report that we've been able to cut our tax levy with the um, adoption of the 2011 budget, if it uh, uh, is adopted, um, by 62%. So we will have a tax levy of uh, less than 1.4 million. Uh, going forward with uh, uh, very distinct possibilities of continuing to reduce that over the next two years. Which should be a close-up shot of Chairman Vanderstein and I just smiling really <laughs> large because it's just a tremendous success story. It's a tremendous success story, uh, one that we uh, certainly had some trials and tribulations along the way, but your leadership, your management team, all of your employees there, uh, it, it's just been wonderful, and, and I know the quality of service is outstanding as well. Yes, we have uh, over 260 employees. Actually, I think it fluctuates between about 265, 270, um, and um, uh, a lot of them with a, a, a high degree of uh, seniority. I think our average seniority there is about 19 plus years. Um, so they take a great pride in doing the doing the work that they're doing. Number one, they're dedicated caregivers. And, and number two, I, I believe they're belie beginning to believe that Rocky Knoll can be successful, will be successful, and can continue to be part of the, uh, the county's overall um, delivery system for health care uh, in the years to come. So um, I've got a great staff. Last question before I turn it over to Mike. So 33 years of experience in this industry, um, most of it in the private sector. What do you see as the key differences or what was your perception than entering a county owned and operated facility? Obviously, I, I think uh, uh, for me as a manager, looking at it that way, the first thing would be the decision making and the timetable involved. Uh, in the private sector, it's not unusual to have a uh, a meeting uh, about an issue uh, uh, on Monday and a decision, you know, Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, a strategy mapped out and uh, implementation starting yet that week. As you know, in, uh, in government, uh, things don't move that quickly. So as somebody who likes to identify a problem, identify a possible solution, and then uh, go to implement, um, that took a little getting used to. Um, but I have to compliment you and Chairman Vandersteen and the, uh, the county board supervisors who have been extremely supportive of me and, uh, and, and our team out there and have allowed us to be uh, more flexible in making decisions and moving forward uh, when, it, when things are on a time-sensitive nature. Um, and I think it's, it's become a, a, a good blend. Um, so that was probably the biggest thing, just the, the hurdles of, of, the, um, uh, of the process. 
And, and I, just a follow-up question on that, what about the facility itself? I know you've made a number of improvements, or the county board through your leadership has made a number of improvements, but mm -hmm. what was your impression of Rocky Knoll as a facility compared to some of the private sector facilities you worked in? Um, as, as a facility, it, it was uh, very well equipped. Um, it was, it's a big campus. Um, in the private sector, typically you wouldn't have campuses that big or sprawling, um, uh, but taking into consideration the age and the design, uh, I think the county did a, a great job in it. When I saw it, I saw nothing but potential, um, and I still do. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike, as you know, um, fewer and fewer counties are operating nursing homes. A lot of them are, are selling them or privatizing them. What's the advantage for Sheboygan County to own and operate uh, a nursing home less, uh, such as we do at Rocky Knoll? I think um, uh, given county, uh, Sheboygan County's long tradition of really caring for its, its residents and looking out for the well-beings of, of everybody that lives in the county, um, there's always going to be a need for this level of care to be uh, provided by the county in one way, shape, form, or another, whether it's outright pain for um, a resident that is indigent and has no means of, of covering themselves but requires the care, or uh, as a supplement to other agencies such as the Department of Health and Human Services um, and the, the vast clientele that they serve. We support that department on a routine basis. In fact, there's uh, typically about 36, 38 um, of our residents that uh, are would, uh, for lack of better term, customers of Health and Human Services. Um, whereas if Sheboygan County had to pay for that, um, an outplacement would be substantially more expensive in the long run. Um, so and given the trends uh, and the aging, um, the aging population is going to crest about 2030, 2035. Um, where um, uh, roughly 60% uh, of the residents in the state of Wisconsin are going to be 55 years old or older, um, there's going to be a continued demand. Those counties that have lost the capability of providing that level of care are going to end up having to outsource that. And I think in the long run, at a substantially more um, costly premise than what uh, Sheboygan County will be since uh, we can operate uh, Rocky Knoll and generate independent revenue to help offset the outright costs. That's great. Now, as we look at Rocky Knoll, uh, how many licensed beds do we have there? And um, uh, what's our current census uh, with relationship to the total number of people we could handle? Sure. Um, our current census uh, is about 165, 167. Um, uh, our licensed capacity is 195 beds, but you have to keep in mind that a, a, a large number of those are in semi-private rooms, which in today's world is almost a, a no-no. Um, the, the consumers today are really looking for private accommodations and given changes in medical conditions or that, uh, some of our rooms uh, were not able to put another resident in. Um, so our realistic capacity is probably around 175, 180, uh, and we're running about 165, 168, which is fairly good uh, given the current economic conditions because the healthcare industry, like all industries, has been hit as well, I know. Our hospitals, our, both of our local hospitals have had layoffs, staff reductions, closed units, even closed them on a temporary basis because even they can't maintain um, a census level. Mike, what kind of services do we offer at Rocky Knoll, and especially the services that maybe set us apart from some of the other uh, facilities in Sheboygan County? Sure, um, good question. Um, we. We offer a vast majority of, uh, a wide majority of uh, uh, programs and, and uh, 
uh, services, um, <clears throat> short-term rehab for both inpatient and outpatient, which isn't all that uh, unusual in the industry. That's where the industry has gone. Um, but we also provide extensive wound care programming. Uh, we have an Alzheimer dementia program, which we're in the process of finalizing and formal, uh, formalizing. Um, we have uh, uh, an acute um, behavioral health or life skills unit, um, which is unique um, to Sheboygan County. There's nothing else like it in Sheboygan County. And that allows us to deal with some of the more uh, challenging uh, clients that, that are out there that need our services, but there are no other alternatives for them. I know you mentioned it before, but to what extent can we really compete with the other facilities in the county? Um, well, the fact that I haven't received a single Christmas card from any of my competitors in the three years that I've been here, I think uh, speaks well for our ability to compete with them. Um, they, um, uh, they would just as soon like Rocky Knoll to be a, a place of last resort rather than a, a premier healthcare center like we are. Um, we, uh, uh, we are aggressive in the way we uh, market our center. Um, we're aggressive in the way that we work with our physicians, build uh, relationships, and, and are, are currently uh, uh, in discussions with um, one of our local hospitals in, in looking at other areas that we can create some synergies and partnerships. What are the, the disadvantages and advantages that you see in how we compare with uh, those other facilities? Um, from an advantage standpoint, I think um, our campus, our location um, is, is, a, is very much a, a plus for us. Um, we are, our uh, stability of our workforce and the, and the skill level of our workforce is very much a plus. I think the, probably the average length of seniority in most of the centers around is probably less than five years. And as I mentioned earlier, we're 19 and a half years. Um, and that, uh, that makes, uh, makes it that our staff can perform their jobs without question. They know what's expected, they know how to do it, um, and they've done it successfully for years. Um, the drawbacks to us, being a county-owned center, um, we have uh, our labor uh, uh, contracts. Um, over the past, we've, uh, you know, we have a high benefit cost, high cost to our staff that we're constantly working with the two collective bargaining agreements to, to bring that more in line. But I would say that that would probably be the, the single biggest uh, disadvantage for us is that our workforce is more expensive. But as I said, it's much more experienced and, and seasoned as well. So there are trade-offs. Okay, um, and as you brought changes to Rocky Knoll, what's been your experience with those labor unions and uh, that represent our uh, majority of the staff that you have out at Rocky Knoll? Um, we spent the first year, um, I spent the first year kind of being grilled as to whether or not I was there to um, sell it or buy it um, or close it. Um, and once we got past that, um, I think we've been able to establish a, a relatively good working relationship. Um, we are working, you know, I'm working very aggressively with our largest union, um, AFSCME, um, and, and their local leadership to create a real partnership, a real synergy, a, a joint effort um, to, uh, to allow us to continue to make Rocky Knoll successful. They've seen the success, they like it. They're looking for job security and, and, and continued employment like, like anybody uh, in today's world. And uh, you know, in, in contrast to that, um, I'm looking for uh, being able to, uh, the ability to compete successfully, which is to control our costs, uh, one of which is uh, labor. Labor represents roughly 59% of the total cost. So that's obviously a component we have to see 
uh, about trying to manage as well as we can. So we've been able to develop some um, uh, joint agreements outside of the uh, annual or semi-annual uh, contract negotiations that have led to some significant cost savings without uh, uh, forcing any layoffs, adjustments, or, or for the most part, any significant reduction in the, in the wages or benefits that our existing staff um, receive. That's great. I know you've really uh, worked hard to, to make them a partner with you in many of the decisions that have to be made out there, and that's to be commended, and you can see some real great results from that. Um, we've all had a lot of fun uh, watching those billboards go up, uh, something about uh, getting your oomph back, and then the men of Rocky Knoll standing on the beach. Tell us a little bit about your marketing campaign and, and, um, and how you've come up with some of those ideas. Sure. Um, thanks. That, that, that's one of those fun questions to ask. That, that's that's one of the more enjoyable parts of my job is to sit down and, and get to be creative with my staff. Um, um, all of the ads have been uh, uh, created by the staff our, uh, ourselves uh, and then we take those concepts and ideas to our advertisers who then bring them to life. Um, but one of the things, uh, I really had two messages I wanted to get across. First of all, that Rocky Knoll is a first class top rate healthcare center and that we deliver quality service day in day out. Um, the second is that I wanted people to understand that you don't come to a center like ours just to sit in the chair and gradually fade away and, and, and pass. Um, that you come to continue your life, you just need some additional support in doing it. So that's where the Keep Living campaign uh, came from. As you alluded to, the men of Rocky Knoll has probably been the most successful uh, billboard uh, ad that we've had, um, uh, soliciting calls from passerbys that called the center to say they had nothing to do with the center, but they saw the billboard and just had to call to compliment us on it. Um, and, and it brings about name recognition. And that's really what I'm looking for. I think everybody understands, for the most part, what we do. Um, I just want them to remember that we're out there doing it. Well, you're doing a great job, Mike. Keep Thanks. it up. Thanks. That'll yeah. turn it back to Adam. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> um, the, the industry keeps changing. I don't know if it's you or a former administrator who said it's more complex than nuclear energy or that rules would have and been regulations. <laughs> you know, it just continues to change. And every year you establish a budget and then the state or federal level of government changes the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a difficult environment to work within. As you look ahead, as we not only prepare for 2011, but the next five years, how do you envision us responding to those state and federal changes and in most cases as you know reducing the revenue that we have to work with in order to keep afloat mm -hmm. great question um the uh, you know, who knows exactly what's going to end up shaking out, out out of everything but the direction that everything is moving if you look at the aging population as i mentioned uh, by 2030 uh, the numbers are just astronomical the healthcare system and the uh, and and the sources that pay for it medicare medicaid are no way going to be able to keep up with it so we need uh, under its current form so we need to keep uh, looking for other ways um, you're going to hear new terminology such as bundling and capitated payments and things of that nature as as we start to roll forward um, hence uh, um, my uh, discussions with the area hospital administrators because these changes are affecting them as well forcing us to work closer and closer together rehospitalization is going to be you know a big no-no going forward there will be penalties not only for the hospitals initially but shortly thereafter to the a skilled, uh, skilled care centers like us. Um, so we need to be more effective, more cost uh, effective, and more efficient in our delivery of care and work together more seamlessly. So that's probably going to be the biggest change. You're going to see more partnerships, for a lack of better term. And last night, and, and if you follow both this program and our county board meetings, that uh, the good person behind the camera here also 
films for us. Um, Mike Tobenheim was uh, one of the key speakers last night and gave a nice overview of what's happened with Rocky Knoll the last three years. And, and I encourage you to look for that program if, if you get an opportunity. And during that meeting last night, Mike, you mentioned that we've had a great track record with reducing the pressure on the property tax levy, but it's your goal to continue Re reducing our reliance on the property tax levy in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you envision in the, the next year or two ahead? Um, well, I have two targets that I'm aiming for. Uh, 2012, uh, as I said, 2013, uh, excuse me, uh, 11 is already set at 1.3. Um, I'm looking to be under a million dollars next year uh, in 2012's budget and at one half million or less um, for uh, 2013. Um, ambitious goals, but I think doable. And of course, the reason I ask you again is because you are on camera, and of course, we ha will have now two forms that we've heard you say this publicly. <laughs> no turning back <laughs> now. <laughs> well, we look forward to working with you to, to see that happen, because again, it's just been a tremendous run, and it's so helpful to all the other departments that need that tax levy and can't generate any other revenue, whether it's the Sheriff's Department or Health and Human Services or planning or you name it. So it's, it's just been uh, remarkable and uh, uh, tremendous leadership on your part. Final question before we wrap up here. Sure. Looking five years down the road, mm -hmm. where do you see, how do you see Rocky Knoll? Um, I think the key ingredient there is gonna be our continued working relationship with both of our bargaining units. I think there's no doubt that we will continue to pursue revenue sources and, and uh, look for ways to generate revenue, but um, controlling our costs going forward is going to be a key, and they're going to play an instrumental role in that process. Um, as I said, the whole industry, as you mentioned as well, the whole industry is changing, the way we have to do business is changing, and I think the way we conduct um, our labor negotiations and, and our working relationship with our labor organizations. It's going to have to be that same partnership and, and synergy if Rocky Knoll uh, is going to continue to be successful for the county. Um, I believe that with the steps that, that have been taken so far, that the future really looks bright for Rocky Knoll. And that um, continued reduction of the tax levy will just uh, be another one of the added value services that Rocky Knoll can add to its resume. Well, very good. Very nice overview. A lot of information. If you have questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact Mike Tobenheim or a member of his staff. Please, if you haven't gotten out to Rocky Knoll, whether you're looking for that type of service at this point in your life or not, swing on in and take a look at that facility. A lot of improvements have been made, beautiful facility, and it's your facility, so I encourage you to take a look at it. And it's not just Rocky Knoll that's doing well. I think the future looks bright for Sheboygan County government as a whole, and that's a re real tribute to Mike and Chairman Vandersteen and everyone who's been involved. We're just about wrapping up our 2011 budget. It, it wasn't easy, but, a, but an effective process, and of course, we continue to have to work as a team, whether it's labor, reducing expenditures, or looking at alternative revenue streams. It's all of the above. There isn't just one answer. So, Mike, thank you for being here today and, and talking about Rocky Knoll and the good things happening there. It was my pleasure. Uh, thank you both. And I, again, would like to ac echo Adam's uh, invitation. Uh, Wednesday's the best day. Um, in the afternoon, we have On the Rocks the uh, bar that is open for our family, guests, and, and residents. Um, it's a fun time. Hey Mike, what's the uh, website for Rocky Knoll? Rocky Knoll's uh, website is uh, myrockyknoll.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, myrockyknoll.com. Until next month when we'll have another department head joining us from the Health and Human Services Department, an important partner to Rocky Knoll. Tom Egerbrecht will be here to talk about Health and Human Services, their programs, and some of the special things that happen over the holidays, and they're gonna shortly be upon us. So until then, on behalf of the County Board, Chairman Mike Vandersteen, thanks for joining us.